Now, I'll pass it on to Alex for a live demonstration to explore the benefits of using parametric modeling for retaining walls, how it works, and how to apply it within your project. Specifically, he'll cover overall overview of parametric modeling, advantages of using parametric modeling for retaining wall design, including speed, accuracy, flexibility, a step-by-step -step workflow on how to create a parametric model for retaining walls, including defining parameters in the templates, creating a model, and extracting data from the model to produce your deliverables. Tips and best practices for using parametric modeling effectively in your project. So I'll pass it on to Alex. Alex, take it over. All right, thanks for that introduction, JP. So let's get started with this demonstration with an all plan bridge. So right now I've got a project open on my screen here. It's got just a little bit of data, which is normally gonna be the starting point for modeling this type of structure. So what I've got right here is not just the profile grade line for my roadway, but I've also got some alignments that have been provided to me by maybe this is the roadway designers or someone else from the civil engineering team has provided me some alignments that indicates the position of this retaining wall. So in this case, I've got the profile grade line, and then I've got what represents the position and finish grade for the top of the retaining wall and the bottom of the retaining wall. This data can be brought in from not just all plans, own solutions, but can also be brought in from products like Bentley's Open Roads or AutoCAD Civil 3D. I've included just a few additional things within this project. Let me go ahead and turn on some of the objects that had been hidden. Show all objects. And what I've done is just included some rudimentary solids here in order for us to be able to visualize the position of the road as well as the position of grade on either side of our retaining wall. This just gives us a little bit more context for the retaining wall that we're going to be modeling. Now that we have the data in front of us, the next step in this process is to decide what sort of retaining wall we're actually going to construct at this location. For this example, we're going to look at a pretty standard retaining wall configuration. Today, we're going to be using a standard design that comes from the California State Department of Transportation. This is one of their standard bridge details, and it is a specific retaining wall configuration. So here is a cross section of the retaining wall where we can see some of the basic properties for the retaining wall, including details of the reinforcement. What's interesting about this standard design, as you can see here, not all of the different cross sectional dimensions are provided directly here. This type of standard actually has a variety of different design heights that it can come in. And depending on the design heights, the different dimensions such as the thickness of the footing or the width of the footing might vary. So what we're going to do is utilize this overall design, not just the standard cross section, but also some of that variability that comes with the design, features whose geometry are driven by the overall height of the retaining wall. And we're gonna see how within all plan bridge, we can have standardized designs that include this level of information, easily bring them into our projects and be able to have all plan bridge cross-reference between the different requirements in order for it to render geometry that not only fits the site that we're working with, but also complies with this tabulated design information. So let's go ahead and see how we can start bringing that information into all plan bridge. All right, so now back in all plan bridge, let's go ahead and import all of the data that we need to use that type of retaining wall. I'm going to access the backstage and use one of the options to import data into the project. So this is a little bit different than the option that we have in the tool or the title bar to reinitialize the project database and rewrite its entire contents with a TCL file. Instead, we're just going to load content of a TCL file into the project without overwriting everything that's already there.